Hello again, a new day, a new experiment. I've been asked about a fan of my subscribers. I'm talking about general awareness. I've been asked for a better presentation somehow of this uh, measurement instrument. It's uh, IR 1035 plus. This is a low impedance and low resistance meter and also it can be used for measuring the internal resistance of the batteries. This is a really cool function. You can have an idea about how good are the cells and the internal impedance and the re internal resistance of the of the cells somehow this one it's working injecting and ac an alternating current with a frequency about i don't know so let's measure it all i know that sometimes let's say when i'm measuring a loudspeaker or headphones i can clearly hear a sound something like this okay i have my headphones right here let's turn this on the measurements here are done with four wires i wish to be so clever to explain you how this low resistance and impedance it's working for the low resistance i know pretty sure it's a compare in between currents and voltage one of the pins from each of the tester it's sending voltages the other one it's sending current and there is a way how to find a mathematical way how to find the difference between voltage and current in function of the resistance and for the impedance then you need to inject a frequency an alternating current but the principle it's the same it's always a difference between voltages and currents so we can do a difference between a well-known resistance inside there with standard voltages and currents and what you get when you measure what you need to measure you know but for now let's see well i i told you when i'm measuring loudspeakers or headphones I can hear a sound. Let me see if I can reproduce that. There it is. Let me have the microphone closer here. So that's the sound I'm talking about. Well, after my uh, musical ear training, I may say it's a kind of 1000 Hertz. But let's see that clear. Let's make this clear with the oscilloscope. So only two pins will send this uh, frequency. So which of them? I don't know. Let me see. Okay. Here we are. Come on. This one or this one? Oh, both. Nice. That's the ground somehow. So there we have a very nice let me see voltage we are on dc no i want to be on ac and here we have a frequency of 996 hertz exactly like i was thinking you know having 1000 hertz or one kilohertz and uh, let's have some measurements here so we have a peak to peak of 52.9 volts we are on 1x and here we should go to x1 of course so we have a peak to peak uh, of course 5.32 volts or 2.46 volts rms and we have a, a duty cycle of 44.8%, almost half and half. It's a kind of square wave. What we can do, let me show you. Let's say we have these batteries and these are alkaline batteries, ordinary batteries, you know. So we can measure the internal resistance. And we got like 
178 milli ohms. These are used, by the way. 190, 183, 184, 200 milli ohms. That those are just wasted batteries. 213. Well, I'm still using them for remote controls and you know stuffs like this. Uh, let me have some nickel metal hydride echoes. So this is a 31 milliohms. Still a very good shape. 33, 34. They are still working great. 26. It was 23. Okay, nice. So the point is when the impedance, I mean the, the resistance of the battery or the uh, rechargeable accum accumulator is it's slow, then uh, the battery is good and you can use it farther. Okay, what else we can do with this uh, measurement instrument? We can build shunt. You know what's a shunt? It's just a piece of wire or a piece of metal calibrated and then you can measure the voltage at the end of the metal piece as long as uh, we have a current passing the shunt. And down there this one here, it's a 50 amps shunt. We can very clearly measure the resistance here and here. So this shunt has 1.86 milli ohms, 87. Once more, 1.73. 155 you know it two really matters you see the screws here maybe are a little bit oxidized or something it, it's absolutely crazy how they can differ but if I'm going here straight to the plates we have 1.52 milli ohms if I'm coming closer it should be 1.51 you see it's already going down if i'm going here so 1.51 i think this is the final the final result we can count on here 187 from here to here this is nuts this is absolutely crazy 151 and here we have 182 so let me try this piece of wire here it's a very short piece of wire and we already have 2.21 milli ohms and from here to here including the wires 5.41 milli ohms so this is absolutely crazy. Low resistance are so amazing. 153, a little bit closer. 150. So I think we had 151 before. Anyway, so if one have this, if this one have a 50 amp um, current, if if we make so we have 151, okay, let's say 150, 1 1.50. If we split that in two, 1.5 divided by two. If I can make a piece of 0 0.75 milliohms, then I'm gonna have a 100 amps shunt so you can do very easy your own shunts by the way this is a backup uh, 
better, you know, for having uh, for having this meter running in any condition. Yeah, very interesting. 50 amps front with uh, 1.5 milli ohms. Okay, so let's have some more tests. Let's see this piece of wire here. It's like 25 centimeters or something. Let's check this one. 4.3 milli ohms. Can you imagine only very short piece of wire like this already have 4 milli ohms. And let me have a stronger one. This kind of, uh, I don't know how much, but 40 amps or something. Well, this is not in such a good shape. But this piece of wire have like 1.06. This is 1.06 milli ohms. I almost can use it like a shunt, you know, for having an ammeter. And now this is the funny part. I have this so-called loudspeakers cables. Uh, very professional. I don't know if it's their profession, but anyway, dedicated loudspeaker cables. And uh, I have like 13 meters here. And let's check for the resistance. Okay. So let's go. Red to red. Oh no, sorry. Here, red to red. Five hundred milli ohms. Almost half of ohm. Okay, and let me see the black one. 336 milli ohms. Okay, let's put them together. Now I should have around 250 milli ohms or something. Because now they are in parallel. And, you know, if we put two resistances in parallel, they are just divided into the value it's divided into. And we have 199, 200, almost 200. Okay, so this is a loudspeaker cable, like, okay, 12, 13 meters. And I already have half of ohm here. And if you have a loudspeaker like four ohms, you are losing a little bit of power, not too much. Okay, but in the same time, it's good for the amplifier because, you know, uh, higher resistance on the output it it uh, it keeps the amplifier cooler and uh, doesn't demand too much power but anyway I can tell you I had uh, and I still have professional cables for my uh, PA loudspeakers and I'm talking I'm talking about uh, 3000 watts per channel or something so there is a lot of current over there and uh, I remember those cables like uh, I think I recall it was like 8 meters long each of them they had around 300 milli ohms so the low resistance domain it's so amazing you'll never you'll never anticipate these uh, resistances ah oh, by the way as long as we are here let me try to measure let me try to measure that cable with some normal ordinary meter where are you right here okay yes i got it there we go oh but first of all Okay, so the testers, they already have 2.2 ohms. Okay, now we go right here and we have 2.3 ohms. Okay, 2.0 in short, 2.2 with the cable. Somehow you can measure that. Let me see, red on red, we should have a half of ohm here, 2.4 and in short 1.9 yeah 
we have half of ohm. So with a good calibrated ohm meter, you can also have a kind of low resistance measurement. But don't forget to check your testers first. 1.9 in short, you see, and 2.3 with the cable. So it's a very clear, almost half a form resistance here. Let me do another experiment. So we have clearly uh, found that this cable is like, let's say, 200 milli ohms from one point to another, from one end to another. And now I'm curious to see what's happening with the AC frequency injected by this device. By, by this device. Come on, there we go. Remember we had that five uh, volts something. Let me see if I can fix them together here. Okay, and the other one, 0 0.2. Hmm. Evidently it's in short, so we can't, you can't have any measurements now evidently it's going on short so uh, so we can't do any measurements what about this yeah 10 kilo ohms okay there we go of course what else okay let's measure one of these accus and checking the oscilloscope maybe Nah. Well, I don't know what's happening anyway. Uh, there is a clear 100 Hertz frequency signal injected into the circuit. Okay, I hope this is useful. Please subscribe, like and comment. That's very important. And uh, of course, don't forget to have fun. See you soon. Bye bye.